You never saw it coming. By the time your sensors pick it up, you're already gone. That is the fear the Raptor inspires. In the world of air combat, there is one aircraft so dominant, so mythical in its reputation, that even mentioning its name sends a ripple through enemy ranks. It was the first of its kind, and nearly two decades later, it's still the benchmark. The F-22 Raptor. This machine is what happens when engineers are told to spare no expense. It's part Jack Dempsey, part Muhammad Ali, and part Mike Tyson, all wrapped in low observable composites and thrust vectoring fury. This heavyweight champion has the power to win a knife fight in a phone booth and land a knockout punch from over 100 miles away. Close or far, you're doomed. The Raptor was designed to rule the skies, and it did, unmatched, unchallenged, until now. Now the Air Force has a new favorite, the shadowy F-47, built with next-gen tech, AI co-pilots, drones, and decades of combat experience baked into its DNA. It's meant to be the heir to the throne. So where does that leave the Raptor? Obsolete? Outmatched? Or is something else going on? Behind closed hangar doors, the F-22 has been doing more than just training sorties. It's been evolving, acting as a testbed for technologies that may have already already helped fast track the very fighter meant to replace it. And even with its age showing, even with fewer than 180 airframes left in service, the Raptor still hits harder, climbs faster, and flies deadlier than anything flying today. But it's not just about performance, it's about legacy, it's about presence. That unmistakable silhouette screaming across a hostile sky, letting the enemy know you are not safe. So before anyone declares the era of the Raptor over, they better remember this. Raptors don't retire, they strike. This is Raptors Revenge. Let's get into it. PilotPhotog.com a famous pilot once said, so you want to know who the best is? Well, when it comes to aircraft, if you want to know who the best is, don't look at the scorecard. Look at who everyone else is trying to beat or measure up against. Every stealth jet that's come after the F-22, whether it's China's J-20, Russia's Su-57, or even the USAF's own F-35 Lightning is measured against one standard, the Raptor. When you're the baseline for everyone else's best, that means you're not just a fighter, you're a legend. This was the world's first true fifth generation air superiority jet. And it didn't just push the envelope, it shredded it. Stealth, speed, agility, and sheer brutality, all fused into one unholy machine of skyborne dominance. It's Jack Dempsey in a low, observable airframe. It's Ali dancing through radar like a ghost. It's Mike Tyson in Afterburner, coming at you with a first round knockout you never saw coming. In close range dogfights, the Raptors thrust vectoring turns the law of physics into mere suggestions. It can pivot, slide, and flip its nose toward a target like it's possessed, leaving enemy pilots wondering how they got locked up while still pulling G's in the opposite direction. But here's the real trick. It doesn't need to get close. With low observable stealth and an arsenal of long range AIM-120 AMRAMs and now AIM-260 missiles, we're talking 100 plus miles. The Raptor can delete threats before they even know it's there. Remember part of a missile's range is determined by the aircraft firing it. In other words, if a launching aircraft can fly high and fast, then the missile will simply go that much farther. Now here's the neat part. Not only can the F-22 fly at speeds of over Mach 2, it can super cruise. What does that mean? Well, the Raptor is one of a very few combat aircraft that can go supersonic 
without having to use its afterburners. On top of all this, the F-22 keeps its weapons internally, meaning that it's almost always clean or slick. Compare this to 4th gen fighters, which have to hang all their weapons on racks off the wings and fuselage. And that's a lot of drag. Since the F-22 is usually flying clean, well, then this means that the missiles shot by the Raptor will travel farther and faster in most flight regimes. It's like a heavyweight champ that can also snipe from a rooftop. That's not just air superiority, that's air supremacy. And with the addition of that AIM-260, America's newest long-range air-to-air missile, the Raptor just leveled up again. You see, the AIM-260 has at least double the range of the AIM-120 that it's replacing. Reports are that the 260's range is over 100 miles, making it the modern-day AIM-54 Phoenix missile. Remember that saying, reach out and touch someone? Yeah. That someone just lost airspeed, altitude, and life expectancy. The bottom line is this. The Raptor was designed to own the skies. And two decades later, no one's taken that title away. But here's the part they don't tell you in press releases. The Raptor wasn't just built to fight. It was built to teach. Behind closed doors, deep in classified test ranges and hidden airstrips, the F-22 has been quietly evolving. Not just as a fighter, but as a flying laboratory for what comes next. You see, around 2018, something curious started happening. Select F-22s were loaded with experimental systems, odd antenna arrays, data links, strange payloads, and even chrome coatings that don't match anything on record. And the pilots, they weren't just flying, they were testing. Testing what? Officially, no comment. Unofficially, many believe those Raptors were helping shape a ghost, a future fighter with no name at the time, a fighter that would later be revealed as the F-47. Think about it. If you're designing the next generation of air dominance, wouldn't you want to start with the most dominant aircraft you already have? By using proven systems from the Raptor, engines, flight controls, sensor fusion, even stealth coatings, the Air Force didn't have to start from scratch. They started from superiority. That means the F-22 isn't just the predecessor to the F-47. It might be the reason the F-47 exists at all. And if that's true, then retiring the Raptor isn't just retiring a fighter. It's unplugging the very machine that's feeding the next generation the data it needs to fly, fight, and win. This is where the stakes get real. Because while the Pentagon talks about budgets, force structure, and transitioning to a hybrid air wing. Enemies like China and Russia are watching closely, and they're racing to close the gap. The Raptor has been buying us time, training pilots, refining tactics, and stress testing tech that could decide the outcome of the next war. Lose that too early, and we might not get a second chance. And here's the interesting thing. While the Raptor has been a test bed for the F-47 and has helped it develop faster than usual, it's still a few years away. And when the 47 does fly, well, it's likely gonna team up with the Raptor in the early part of its career. I imagine an F-47 controlling swarms of drones, sending them forward to fight, to set off enemy defenses, and take out anti-air sites. Meanwhile, a pair of Raptors could fly with the F-47 and provide highly maneuverable, close range, air-to-air -air support. Nothing gets through. This form of teaming would bring out the strengths in each aircraft. So maybe the question isn't when the F-22 will retire. Maybe it's what happens to the future when it does. Yet for all its dominance, the Raptor isn't invincible. Even apex predators age, and in a world where war is shifting east toward longer ranges, wider oceans, and more advanced sensors, some of the F-22's weaknesses are starting to show. First, let's talk range. The F-22 was built during a different era, specifically the Cold War, where the primary threat was across the Fulda Gap, not the Philippine Sea. Its combat radius, around 500 nautical miles. And that's perfectly fine for Europe. But in a fight over the vast Pacific, that's gonna be a problem. Tanker support becomes a lifeline and 
a liability. And guess what the enemy is targeting first? China has invested much in long-range air-to-air missiles designed to take out these flying gas stations at range. And like any tanker crew member will tell you, you can't kick ass without tanker gas. Said another way, you can't dominate the air if you can't get there. The newer fighter needs to have much more range. Then there's the numbers game. Only 187 Raptors were ever built. Fewer than 150 remain flyable today. That's not just rare, that's precious. These airframes are constantly rotating across missions, training exercises, and now test duties. We're asking one aircraft to be everywhere at once, a champion, a teacher, and sometimes even a ghost. That's a lot of pressure for a shrinking fleet with no new examples being built. And then there's the tech gap. As wild as it sounds, the Raptor, king of the skies, lacks an IRST system. That's right, no built-in infrared search and track. In an era where China and Russia are pumping out IRST equipped jets, that's a critical sensor the Raptor simply doesn't have. Why? Blame the original stealth design priorities. Remember, the Raptor was essentially designed in the 1990s and its unique low profile gold tinted canopy. It blocks the very helmet mounted queuing systems that newer fighters like the F-35 rely on for high off bore sight missile shots. It's like having a heavyweight boxer who can't look over his shoulder. Now don't get me wrong, the Raptor is still lethal, but modern air combat isn't just about who punches hardest. It's about who sees first, who shares data Data first and who adapts the fastest. And the F-22, as legendary as it is, was built before much of that was possible. The Raptor doesn't just face obsolescence from new fighters, it faces it from the future itself. It doesn't have the latest buzzwords. It doesn't carry AI co-pilots or swarm drone integration. It wasn't designed to be a node in a cloud. It was the storm. When the F-22 first flew, it changed everything. For the first time in aviation history, air dominance wasn't about matching the threat. It was about outclassing it so completely that the fight was over before it even began. And for over 20 years, no one has dared step into that ring. Yes, it's aging. Yes, it's rare. And yes, someday it will be replaced. But like another famous pilot once said, maybe so, but not today. Today, the Raptor still flies. It still trains our best pilots. It still hunts threats across the globe. And when the moment comes, when deterrence fails and the red light goes green, it will be the Raptor that answers the call. You don't measure the Raptor by its age. You measure it by what it's still capable of doing by the silence it brings to hostile skies, by the fear it still puts in enemy hearts. This isn't just an aircraft, it's a legacy. So before you count it out, before you hang the gloves and salute the future, just remember one thing, the Raptor still fights, the Raptor still wins. And when the next great battle comes, the skies will go quiet and then it will strike because raptors don't retire they hunt and now you know pilotphotog.com